The Department of Health says it will not be complacent even if the number of persons under investigation for the novel coronavirus is down to 171. Persons under investigation are called PUIs. Health Assistant Secretary Maria Rosario Vergere says there are now a total of 521 PUIs in the Philippines. 171 are admitted, while the other 350 have already been discharged. The decrease in our admitted patients under investigation reflects the department's strengthened surveillance, assessment, and management interventions for COVID-19 health events. Although we see a decreasing trend, the department will not be complacent and will be more vigilant as we brace for the possibility of local transmission in our country. Of the 521 PUIs, a total of 453 have already tested negative for COVID-19, while 22 patients still have pending test results. Of the three confirmed cases, one died due to severe pneumonia caused by the virus, while the other two recovered. In Japan, a total of 27 out of 538 Filipinos on board the cruise ship Diamond Princess tested positive for COVID-19. Passengers and crew remain quarantined. As of Monday, the novel coronavirus has killed at least 1,765 and infected 70,400 people in China. Major events all over the world have been canceled, like the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona and Japan's celebration of the birthday of its new emperor, Naruhito. Senator Risa Ontiveros confronts Bureau of Immigration officials if they are aware that some employees facilitate the entry of Chinese workers for Philippine offshore gaming operators. Pogos allegedly pay 10,000 pesos per person. Ontiveros says on Monday, February 17, the modus is called pastillas because payouts are rolled in bond paper. Ontiveros shows screenshots of Viber groups of immigration employees facilitating the entry of Chinese persons. You have been uh, in charge since November 2018. Either you are complicit or you are negligent. And I don't know which is worse. Ontiveros warns BI officials may face charges under the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Last February 12, Ontiveros presented to the media an exploited Taiwanese worker who was rescued from her Pogo employers. The woman said her employers say they have a protector in government by the name of Michael Yang. Ontiveros said they were checking if this Michael Yang is President Rodrigo Duterte's ex-economic advisor. In a previous hearing in January, the Bureau revealed 1.8 million Chinese had entered the country in recent years. It was a different kind of Valentine's Day for hundreds of journalists, artists, and civic leaders as they wore red and took to the streets to protest government efforts to shut down media giant ABS-CBN. About 500 people gathered for the Red Friday protest on Friday, February 14 in front of the ABS-CBN building on Esguera Street, Quezon City. Itutuloy po natin ito. Naniniwala kami na magtatagumpay tayo dahil tayo ay nasa tabi ng katotohanan. Campus journalists also joined the protest in solidarity with ABS-CBN. ABS-CBN has been on the receiving end of President Rodrigo Duterte's attacks. Duterte has repeatedly warned the company that its franchise would not be renewed after it expires on March 30. Congress has the mandate to issue, renew, or cancel broadcasting franchises, but Solicitor General Jose Calida on Monday, February 10, filed a coaranto petition before the Supreme Court. He asked the High Court to nullify the franchises of ABS-CBN and ABS-CBN Convergence, alleging that the entities unlawfully exercised their legislative franchises. Senators from both sides of the political fence will file a petition before the Supreme Court questioning Malacanang's termination of the Visiting Forces Agreement with the United States. In a statement, opposition Senator Franklin Drillon says Senate Resolution Number no. 312 will be a bipartisan move to assert the Senate's role in foreign policy. Drillon says that while the president is the chief architect of our foreign policy, the Constitution is clear that such a very critical role is shared with Congress, particularly the Senate. Drillon says Senate President Tito Soto asked him to be the co-author of the petition. Soto earlier said other majority senators are interested in joining the petition, including Senator Richard Gordon and Senator Panfilo Lacson, who urged against the scrapping of the military accord. 
Duterte ordered the termination of the VFA after the U.S. canceled the visa of Senator Bato de la Rosa, Duterte's first Philippine National Police Chief, who is the architect of his anti-drug campaign. Rising teenage pop star Billie Eilish drops her James Bond theme tune Friday, February 14, racking up 2.2 million views in just six hours. This is for the upcoming Bond movie, No Time to Die. Eilish was the breakout star at the Grammys last January, sweeping five awards including the Big Four Prizes, Album of the Year, Song of the Year, Record of the Year, and Best New Artist. Eilish, who only turned 18 in December, is the youngest artist to record a Bond track. 